Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Human Colony Saturday Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, July the 21st, 2018, and I'm here with my special guest, Jana Hopman, for the first time. She's Hi, actually everyone. here in the room, so that's really exciting. Uh, in the room, we have Christine, Dawn, uh, Paula, and Reinhardt, and if you are watching in the YouTube chat, there should be a link there. If you want to come directly in the Google Plus room, you can. Um, just to give you some announcements for Human Colony, we have on the 16th through the 21st of August, the third Ascension Workshop, which will be in Dansville, New York. It's $400 for five days of Reiki, Galactic Reiki, channeling, telepathy classes, and spending time with Jim Charles and Max Rempel. There will also be wonderful different programs, hikes in the woods, and some nature outings as well. Uh, you can go to hukalo.org to find out all the information of the website. I have been asked to request that if you are coming to the workshop and you are making your plane reservation, fly to Rochester and not to Buffalo. The pickups that they are providing are out of Rochester and not Buffalo. It's, it's a, quite a distance. Dansville is somewhere there, a little bit, not quite in the middle. So please fly into Rochester. And also on Friday nights, we have the channeling practice group. You can find out about that if you go to the hukolo.org uh, website. And that's free to join for anybody who's interested in channeling. Or you can send a private message to me, to Karen Newman, on uh, Facebook or also through hukolo.org. So, Yana. Yes. Um, I've known Yana for how long? Five years? Five years, about here. Yeah, I met Yana on a... Um, on a seminar called Earth and Beyond. Uh, it was an Earth and Beyond festival. We actually met each other uh, on, on sort of the meet and greet, didn't we? Pre yes, and I was giving I was giving a, 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 an on-stage performance there. She was giving yeah. a workshop on workshop, um, Stargate. Stargate. Yeah. 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 So for everyone who doesn't know you, I know you, but for everyone that doesn't know you, why don't you talk about your sort of your spiritual path and you know where where it really mm. started for you because nobody here knows you so. well it started if you yeah. all have some time it started pre-birth but <laughs> well let's start with from the time you hit the hit the earth okay and, so. if, and if and if it, it don if you, how is the sound is it good yeah yeah okay perfect Great. thanks Reinhardt. okay go ahead so um well i've been a, a sort of psychic um empath since childhood on and in the beginning, uh, it was more of a hinder to me than, than really a blessing because I was very, really sensitive to uh, mood swings all around me or when people were arguing in a room and I came into the room, I could sense everything. And, and it was a bit of a, a out, out uh, different, I felt always different in school because I um, always could sense things or was a bit bored with the material and then I did a bilocation and I hung under the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. then when, when the when the teacher said and 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 now uh, is reading Yana uh, I have to come back really quickly. Oh this would happen when you were in class. Yeah when I was oh. in class. Yeah. So and I learned from very early on that it was better not to talk about it because yeah. everybody was labeling it as a fantasy. Yeah. So um, the more conscious part of when I did start reading and um, get into my spirituality was about 15 years. And I read a lot of books. And uh, fortunately, uh, I had a grandmother who was... Uh, uh, doing uh, seances to help uh, oh. to help pass to help uh, oh, people sure. pass. So they she worked with a, a group of people from this side and was helped from the other side. So people who were in the between, uh, uh, they helped them to get into to the light from, from both from two sides. Yeah. So she was doing seances. So she was a medium. Yes. Yeah, well, she wasn't a medium. It was more of a collective thing that they, that they did that and. I don't know whether she never talked. I did. She she died when it was fairly early. Okay. So um, 
I she she never talked about mediumship with me, but right. I, I can imagine she was. Wow. And my gra- my grand grandmother was a medium, wow. so that so it's a sort of a female line. Thing. Were they in the Were they in the spiritualism church or spiritualist? No, church? they no they. Uh, I, I know from my um, from my grand grandmother that uh, the time wasn't right for that. So I I just knew she knew she had a precognition of things. She she also. Uh, uh, said when she was going to die herself. Wow. That's it. Yeah. She she uh, she uh, uh, said how she would die at at her at hairdressers and with <laughs> two two but not when yeah. between two. Uh, how do you say that? Schotten? How do you say that? Uh, walls. The oh, walls. walls. Yeah. yeah. And um, but she never. Uh, she didn't know when, but uh, I know that is the story of my mother. Told oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but but there were books in the house like Seth and uh, like uh, uh, about uh, the, the, the cosmonauts were, were uh, I don't know how the English would have the Gode Cosmonauten from Deneke, Deneke Boeken, Boeken, uh, books. So uh, there was some some information there. And I, from... From there on, I just went to the library and read things like Blavatsky and stuff. Oh, you read Blavatsky. Yeah. Blavatsky. Yeah. Madame Blavatsky. Yeah. I have that. actually, I have all these books there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, let me ask you, did you read the set books? I read the set books when I was 15. Did you read all of them or not? Uh, I, I, re- I read those who were in the house and that was only two. I don't know the titles. Yeah. But I know, uh, I know what he was teaching. It was very, right. it felt really felt very drawn did to you have it. the one with the red cover and then the uh, what was the first book called um uh seth speaks, seth speaks yes yeah. that's one i read yeah you know just i had we had the seth books in my house which is funny because you'll hear people say it like this we had the seth books yeah. you know and i think i read one of them i found the the picture on the back of that book to be very scary okay. it's a really scary picture where she's kind of and um but yeah. but I didn't realize until just a year ago that we had all of the Seth books in my house. Yeah. So I don't know if I read them now or not. I know I read the Seth Speak books, but I didn't realize that we had all of them. And mm. it's just so many people who end up being channels have read those books yes. at a very young age, which is quite quite interesting. So yeah. yeah. So I think I think we we uh, choose our parents. Yeah. For as when we come as star seeds or we come as light workers uh, for a mission, there's a lot of stuff that we pre agree upon, and we we search for parents that, uh, on one hand, give us the 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 sending paper to uh, to um, really uh, uh, create uh, things like compassion and uh, uh, learn to overcome hardship and stuff stuff like that make us really uh, feel loneliness so we are empathic when we uh, um, work with people and know how they feel really from the inside by experience yeah. and on the other side give give them uh, their they have a sur- they uh, nurture the surrounding of the first things awakening so you can uh, yeah. get, get curious that's that's the main thing yeah. Yeah. you're also an artist I'm an artist, yeah. I'm sort of two sides evolved. I, I did art school, I did a lot of art teaching, and uh, I've, I've been an artist for many years, uh, sculpting, theater design, some, and uh, uh, sculpt, uh, uh, mostly painting, illustration. And, uh, uh, but the, the other side always was there, like a yeah. red thread to everything, spiritual development all my life. Yeah. 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 So you, so when did channeling become something that you channeling experienced? for me yeah. for me was more um i never called it channeling right i was it was uh, the first thing in my in my development was a, a massage and body work school schooling okay. that i did and uh, while massaging people i noticed that they spontaneously became uh, begun to get to have past life experiences that I had no no skills for. So then I started to um, to to learn about uh, I did reincarnation regression reincarnation therapy 
uh, schooling. And, um, but I was very intuitive, knowing what people need, knowing uh, in, my, in my, for example, in my practice, I know when I massage people and I uh, sort of needed to be on the other side I, as well. I, I have had several uh, occasions that I bilocated and was on the other side as well, just as a natural thing. Wow. It sort of evolved naturally. Um, I had a practice in Amsterdam doing that, working with people. And um, uh, then then the, the artist part took over. And so the channeling part is about, uh, I think, t- ten, 10 years ago that I really be- uh, became in a sort of quickening of my process. And, uh, yeah. So you, so you channel, I, I just want to, I want her to show them, but she's got so much beautiful things always happening around her when she's doing uh, her classes and she's teaching, the rooms are always full of orbs. You, she has beautiful pictures of them. Um, there's a beautiful sort of sacred site in Leiden where she's living and she goes there and she was showing me today pictures of earth uh, spirits floating around and she's I don't know whether, whether this this is We able. can try. Yeah, probably. we can try to, to show yeah. you if, if you If we want. hold it really still, I think you can see. I'll have to look them up for her. Yeah, so she's, so she's okay. got all of these sort of beautiful, you know, evidences that she's collected. And so, but when did it become, because you work with the Arcturians, the... Well, the main thing when I when I started channeling, yeah, uh, it was a channeling class I did in uh, in London. Okay. Um, and the first one right away who uh, who came in with me said she was Alaya from the Pleiadian Council of Light, and uh, that she would uh, would would be the one uh, to to teach me how to channel, and that was exactly what was happening. She uh, very. Uh, intensely worked with me for four or five months. Okay, I'm going to need you to also just try to, because as you start getting softer, as you start relaxing, you're talking, you get softer. So okay. I'm, we, I just turned her up. Can you can you hear the difference? Yeah. Maybe YouTube, if they can respond, but just make try to keep your... I keep my voice high and yeah. And I firm. moved the mic a little closer, so... Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's great. Let me just check the gain. Let me make sure... Oh, hold on a second. Now, now it should be loud. Is it loud? It's loud now. It's, now it's perfect. Yeah, thank Is you. Is it perfect? Okay, so now you can speak in your normal. So style. I don't know whether you know what orbs are. Yes. Really. Orbs are energy beings, and they are a lot about around the work I do. So I did. I'll just try to show you. Oh, you can really see it. Yeah, just hold the. Yeah, like this. So I on twelve, twelve, twelve. This this uh, place in uh, in Leiden is the Burgt, and it was uh, I was. A given uh, uh, a channeling that is this would be a light portal for Leiden, and to bury my beloved skull there that what went with me all over the world, and uh, and this was buried under this tree. And um, while we did the ceremony there and uh, activated the the light portal there, uh, there was a lot of orbs there. I have more photos. No, it's not still in Christine. <laughs> There's, a, I can guarantee you on the uh, that Same. I'm looking for. Yeah, there was a lot of light, light orbs, light beings. Yeah, and yeah. actually, that place that where that tree is 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 it's at the very sort of the highest point in Leiden, and it was the lookout for the village hmm. back in the. Yeah, you know, old it's a sort days. of sort of a, a little mountain, a height height, and there's, there's a stone ring. So and there's water underneath. So there was a lot of elements already to make this a center yeah. center place. This is also a very nice one to show you, as this is if you can see this. That's the moon. No, that's not the moon. That's my guide. That is, <gasps> this is oh, actually is that, oh is that, this is oh, oh wait. This is an interesting as well, but I would like to show you this oh, one. Oh, that, that's the orb that came in the picture. Yes. Okay. That's, I, I asked, um, I was in a retreat in the, uh, in the Ardenne, and I, there was a, a woman there who uh, did a lot of orb photography, and she said, my guardian angel is always in a lot of pictures. And um, 
I said, I would love to have that. So she said, we went outside and uh, she said, just concentrate on your guardian angel and ask her to be to come near. And then, then we took this picture. So this is actually my, my guardian angel. Oh, wow. It looks a bit like she has a face. I asked her, but uh, it is uh, an energy signature. So it's not the, the cute eyes and the nose. It's, uh, it's an energy, energy signature. Yeah. It looks like, yeah, I see. It looks like, uh, yeah. yeah. It does look like a little looks face. Like a face. Right? It looks like a yeah. little face. Yeah. She, uh, and then this one, um, this one she's going to show is she was at, also in Leiden? Was it Leiden, Lake? yeah. Lida is just so you know context. It's right next to the Hague. It is the city that was occupied by the Spanish Paula for yeah. the longest time, <laughs> and they have still a sort of big celebration in October, which is their liberation from Spain Day. But the city, just like all old European cities, was fortified by walls, and you know because the Netherlands itself is now one country, but at one moment it was little kingdoms, you know, all together, just like Germany was or Spain was. And and so we still have uh, remnants of these time periods, the wall structures or whatever. But Leiden in and of itself has a very special energy because of the canals going through. There's such a water mm. there. You've got these sort of very um, old trees that are, ancient like these sort of mother energy trees that are there there's a special special park a very old park uh, this is uh, that was created un it was a university uh, study park uh, for biology for plant uh, her herb herbalists uh, kind of thing and it's called the uh, the hortis and it's uh, uh, it's an arboretum uh, if you know that that term mm -hmm. And uh, this this has very old trees, and sometimes they are open at night, and you can uh, you can you can photograph a uh, little mm, let me see yeah. little light beings there. So and that's just then the show the one over the lake, and the one over the lake is this one. Yeah, yeah, like that this one, one. yeah. And I'll show you the enlarged, the enlarged. Uh, and just to tell you, for people who sort of follow like Celtic and see, this is this is the orb when in the uh, on the, there's on the orbs corner, here. yeah, on the corner. And then there's up there's yeah. the light being the the uh, the Rhine River. You know, comes across Germany and through Holland. So you've got all that energy, and you've got the sort of goddess energy of the Jago. Jagavadeta, I think that's the name of the god, something like that, the goddess that, mm -hmm. that oversees that riverway. So there's a beautiful um, history from that as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have one more one more special orb photo to share. Oh, that's a beautiful and one. And that's that's um, actually there too. There are always, uh, always, uh, whether you know it or not, your higher guidance and your angels are always there when you have ceremony or when you have initiations like we did. We um, we went to the uh, to Egypt to do the the whole temple tour and we had the uh, the pyramid for part of the night for ourselves to do ceremony with a group of light workers. And you see, we did initiations there as well, and you see a lot of orbs there when doing initiations. I have one other. Yeah. You see that when the initiation is done, it's your higher guidance is cheering on and is very present. And is that in Egypt? This is the in the ch the king's chamber of the pyramid. Oh, that's the king's. Show it again, just yeah. to say it's the king's chamber of the pyramid. King's chamber of the pyramid. Yeah. At night, we crawled in at night, <laughs> very dark. Yeah. And uh, we did uh, did initiations there. Is that yeah. cool? Yeah. Yeah. Like this is also a photograph of the king's chamber doing ceremony there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so now. What are you going to talk? What are you going to talk about? Well, does anyone in the Does anyone in the room have a question or in the YouTube chat for Yana about anything we've talked about so far? Um, if you do, you can just sort of unmute your mic and ask. 
you know, keep it pertinent to what we've talked about, but you're free to ask anything or we can continue to go forward. But does anyone else have any question? Um, only one question. Sure. The, the light, what, what you could see on your pictures, can everybody see it or just not? That's uh, well, actually, I don't see it, but that's what uh, what uh, what I tell people uh, until you see them right away. And some people, uh, when they open up, uh, don't open up their visual part. They're more inclined to open the hearing or the knowing, the clear, clear knowing. Oh, okay. So uh, when you photograph them, the the, the digital pho uh, photo, the cameras yes. uh, actually uh, can catch a frequency that our uh, physical eye doesn't doesn't get yet. It so when you when you take a photograph with with flashlight uh, uh, in a sort of situation that is uh, festive or they like they like their parties they're, they're always there when the parties are there when the, when the spirit is high and the energy is nice they are there and um, and you can you can just uh, try to uh, at night ask them to come and photograph them with with a flashlight did you? Okay. This is a question because I don't get orbs in my photos, but she has so many photos with orbs. And I just wonder, like, if, if other people there that were taking the pictures were getting the picture with the orbs or not. Um, I, think, I don't think everybody gets, gets orbs. It's also uh, they are, um, they're not, not, there are different kinds of orbs. So there are also little energy beings and they sort of like the parties, but also sort of skittish. Uh, uh, so you, you have to, uh, they, they see your energy and want to be there. So yes. when, you, when you raise your energy, like being joyful, thinking happy thoughts, uh, thinking of, of things that open your heart, they're more inclined to come near and, and let, let you photograph them. Okay, thank you very much. I did a lot of photographing just behind my house on the balcony uh, in the night sky just you have to make a lot of photos in the beginning you have to make a lot of photos and that, and then they when you flash they are curious they want to see what the light is and they come, yeah. <laughs> Mich I, now all of us tonight will be out there with our cameras i can see it michelle you have a question hi michelle michelle this is Jana. hi, hi michelle. michelle are you there hi i am Actually, I didn't mean I had a question. I just meant I photograph orbs. <laughs> okay. Cool. Are you where are you photographing them then? Um, you know, they first started appearing um, in photographs right. earlier, like with the very early digital cameras. Um, yeah. And then I have a friend who has exactly the same kind of fairy looking beings. She has cameras set up all over her farm, very okay. fresh farm. Like she's got a Merkaba on her property right. in the woods and lots of little sections to like Celtic different, you know, ideas, um, belief systems. And um, she just keeps these cameras like on 24 hours. And she gets lots of photographs of interacting yeah, that's nice. orbs and sometimes thousands. Mm, and oh, wow. after her mom died, so there was a new orb and it has a very specific design. Mm. Did you see the one it shows on her up. orb that had a sort of pattern in it? It kind of looks like there's sort of, it's like a, did you see the one she showed of her? I didn't see, Show I didn't that see one again. Because she, she has one of her own guardian angel and it's a like, big orb but and i hope you can see the detail of it but it has I'll like indentions the detail as well yeah okay. yeah oh that's good hold it up just a little yeah. bit there yeah you see it yes. and then yes the next one is the enlarged version oh sorry enlarged version of it it is huge too uh, so yeah. yeah you yeah. see yeah looks, yes yes her but mom's I also has like two colors and a design in it it's mm -hmm. really interesting they have to, they have to have colors, yeah. yeah so yeah. so they used to did they, they used to catch the orbs on the actual kodak camera didn't they or not you know or i don't just, i don't I know a guy that used to ask questions and there would be written on his film 
Mm -hmm. It was that Polaroid, you know, that would come out the bottom and you'd have to wait for oh, it yeah, to yeah. develop. Yeah. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I remember Brooke's 13th birthday party. There were like tons of orbs in the night mm -hmm. sky and I was taking pictures, but I don't know, I can't remember if that was before or after I got a digital camera. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it goes so fast. Anyway. Yeah, cool. But, Anyone but, else have any questions? No? Okay, let's move okay. forward. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So um, it's been a, it's been a, a, an adventure and a, and a journey for me. So it's uh, it's all sort of naturally evolving. Like everybody is evolving right now in the in the in the in the light in the light emissions that that coming are coming to Earth. And we're we're doing this in tandem with Mother Earth itself. It's a planetary. So what so, are you teaching now? What is it that you primarily do? What I primarily primarily do is um, I, in my own journey, in my own journey, at a certain point, I knew I was in in uh, in a sort of quickening. I don't know whether that's the good yeah, word. We, for it, but we use quickening. Yeah. Use word, so yeah. the quickening, and uh, I, at that point, and that that is what I notice with a lot of the people come coming to me, is that your guidance take over they uh this is sort of a pre-agreed thing uh when you uh, go into that uh, stage of coming into service um they bring on your path exactly what you need to know in books in films in youtubes in people coming on your path in like they say to you you have to go to sedona you have to go uh, to egypt to uh to um to awaken certain uh yeah. Uh, things and for me it was also like that and that's very fortunate is that um, I had a little travel fund beforehand and when they they send me on a lot of foreign trips to uh, to really awaken uh, every every time I came back the fund was uh, re uh, replenished. Was replenished again. Oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to the grocery store, and then a man beside me said, "Oh, you're the, you're you're the one I bought two paintings from, and we have an extension to a house. Can I buy a painting from you?" And that was exactly the amount awesome. again. So there was a lot of coincidence, dental situations, and it sort of evolved until a certain moment because you, uh, I didn't know on the path. What the next step will be i wanted to know what my service uh would would be like yeah and um uh at a certain uh my guidance my guidance didn't want to tell me uh and at a certain point i came, uh, came to a workshop with the stargate and things sort of clicked into place for me it was very the stargate behind me and um I felt it was an evening workshop in uh, in a in a spiritual center in uh, in Amsterdam, and uh, it felt so well felt so so drawn to it. So um, I asked the guy who was giving that, Pragit Harris, uh, can I do a personal session with you uh, to see where this is coming from? And then I did a session with his guide. Uh, Alcazar, and he said, "You have worked with this this technology in in uh, uh, Atlantean time." So uh, from then on, I did a few courses with him, and that really uh, that really felt like coming home. And it really, I really absorbed it very quickly, and was yeah, sort of felt everything fell into place. And now. All the things I do uh, are I incorporate this portal portal uh, function within my work to heighten the energies of myself, but also heighten the energies of those who come. So, so this is just this is her travel version, Stargate. She has one that in her home that you can actually. I've crawled in it myself and sat in it um, before, but it's she has a full scale version of one so but explain every to, to everyone what is what is the stargate and what is okay. the, what is the function so, of the stargate what are arcturians the, the arcturians are my guidance 
and the Arcturians uh, are the ones that I, uh, I, uh, in Atlantean times, I didn't work as an Atlantean with, it, but as an Arcturian at that that timeline. Um, what what it is is it, it's uh, uh, how they explain it to me is that uh, it's a portal, uh, it's a consciousness field that serves as a uh, when uh, when uh, with the when the mutual intention uh, is, uh, is is awakening it or starting it up, it is um, bringing in a portal uh, a sort of grid system you can yeah. say, and uh, that functions as a portal, and it makes it and when this is within the space either within the quantum space we create or either in a in the space we work in in a physical form um it uh accelerates as a as a vortex the the energies the dimensional energies from the uh, third where we are third fourth to the 12th uh, dimensional energies and these energies uh by resonance heighten your own energies as well to, and it, that makes it very much more easy to incorporate the light encodings that are coming in or the light, the light beings we work with, with information and um, bringing in their healing or transformational things. And so, so in the, I, I just want to answer the question, Michelle's asking, did it feel amazing when I was sitting inside the, the, um, Stargate. the Stargate and, and actually no, there was no feeling inside of it, but yeah. because the entire room's energy is yeah. lifted in her home, she has a practice or a, uh, what do you call it? It's, yeah, a room where I, a room. I do groups. And she just groups things. The whole energy of that room yeah. is so heightened yeah. that you get it just by walking in the room. And, and the, the uh, Stargate is more... Symbolic Actually, this, of the. Of it's the, not. It's not the sim symbolic okay. as the the field that the we field, the field good, yeah. that we call in the consciousness is a interactive consciousness, but right. it needs uh, one focal point to anchor the energies, okay. and this is sacred geometry. Uh, plus, can we hold this up for people yeah, so they can, can see it? Up. And oh. Christine, we'll get to you in just a moment, and. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's literally this like this, Don. It's exactly this, Don. Uh, but it is is is. I'm how tall I can, is it? I can I can show you a photograph. Yeah. But if you see this, you see a lot oh, of just up a, a lot of yeah. This is it. This is a lot of geometries within this, and um, there are several pyramid shapes, but also uh, other pyramids. Actually, stargates are uh, are they're all over the universe and they have them on on uh, starships as well this one is spe specifically to the third dimension to to give uh, to suit as the anchor for the third dimensional energies and to to bring the portal in um, what the Arcturians told me is that uh, when a civilization is uh, uh, at a level that they can receive uh, this te technological help, uh, somebody within that civilization will receive the information. That's how they bring in information in little spoons once we're ready for the information. And um, actually, I have the large one, but uh, to make the portal field uh, the little one, I take with me to do the out, out of house courses in Joy in Rotterdam. Uh, the feel there is as strong as at my home, but I really like the large one. <laughs> Do you have a show so, a picture from the large one? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I can show. Yeah. This actually is a, a golden one uh, because the metal is very uh, in high resonance, and it's that's uh, beneficial. So I have to see. Um, I have to look for. So in the meantime, Christine, what is your question? Um. I was, um, I tried to make a um, pyramid. Um, yeah. I wanted to practice making a pyramid both in, um, um, with the four and with uh, just three. 
um, as the bottom. Anyway, does it have to be perfect? I mean, does it have to do each? Oh, see, perfection is like not it's, it's like it's <laughs> geometry. It's very important that yeah. the, the shapes are uh, exactly right. That's the way geometry works. Mm -hmm. Well done. Um, yes, like like the pyramids were were made. It's like uh, yeah. it's it's like like even with those very large buildings, they are very accurate in in a few. Well, it made me appreciate the people who put them together because um, the points were falling apart and. Uh, <laughs> okay. I had to clamp them on the top. Yeah. Anyway. Well. If you if you have somebody in your uh, in your surroundings who can solder that uh, you have to, but it, it, as long as the measurements are right, uh -huh. and it, it you, has to be metal. You, it can't be wood. You can you can ask people to to solder it for you once you you solder, do, yeah. solder it for you. Yeah, yeah. It could be metal. You could make it out of another material, but you have to think about it that that metal conducts energy very easily and very yeah. very very clearly. Copper, copper is also very con conductive, is that a word? Conductive. Yeah, conductive for the energy, so that's a good... You know, when I was a little kid, my dad, my, I, don't, I don't think I've told people this, or maybe is that my father was very much into pyramids, the Incas and the Mayas, he studied them, that was his big passion. And when I was a very little kid, and my, my dad is very precise, he created a pyramid about this big in the exact dimensions mm -hmm. And we did all kinds of experiments with it. There was used to be a book in the, the 70s yeah. called Pyramid Power. Yeah. I don't know if you Apples know it. underneath and the water. Yeah, we did yeah. all that. Yeah. And then, But he then, he hung it above my bed, and I slept under that thing for years. Yeah. That's probably yeah. what happened to me. I don't know. But um, yeah. but he made it. And I remember him with exact measurements and an exacto knife yeah. cutting really, it and everything. You really yeah. have to. So here's the picture of the one I have in my, in my, uh, in my space. You see, you can sit in it, and it's really, really big. Yeah. But it's good to work with geometries. Everything, actually, uh, sacred geometry is uh, is something that, uh, when you're on your spiritual path, is something to look into because, uh, and everything, if you, uh, in the seen and unseen world. Uh, when energy uh, lowers itself into a more material form, it needs a sort of form of uh, sacred geometry to hold these energies in space, if in in place. For me, for us, the the physical form is is that that is the Merkaba. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I have a lot of Merkaba in stones, and. Um, but now, instead of uh, dream catchers, I'm going to have to look for um, these uh, different pyramids to hang over my bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe Amazon it really, has really some work. Ones. I will tell you that book. It, it's probably still available. It was called Pyramid Power. It yeah. was really a good book. Yeah. It yeah. talked about all the stuff you can do with pyramids and and. Uh, yeah, we did it. We did it when I was a kid, and I actually even made it my school project, and I took milk in that it turned into yogurt under the pyramid mm -hmm. and then i wrote my school report on that yeah I, I i remember those the things as well i have a small small pyramid uh, shape as well and uh, i did experiments with apples yeah, one they apple. turn them into apple yeah they yeah, dry them. Uh, yeah yeah so the, one apple or or uh, uh, vegetables who stay uh fresh longer on the on the under the pyramid and were weltered uh, weltered uh, uh, they, they withered. With it, with it, uh, yeah, outside of it, yeah. yeah. Well, the horse would like it. <laughs> yeah, they would like it. As long as you make one, make a big one, then you can sit under it. Yeah. But I can't do perfect measurements. They well, you can, you can probably at this day and age, and we're talking the 70s, no internet, nothing. My dad sat there with a calculator and his, you know, architectural kind of knowledge and was able to figure out how to make it but you could probably google you know exactly yeah. you know the giza yeah. pyramid measurements so that you could make something absolutely they yeah. have them on the internet yeah yeah so and, yeah, and right now thing, you can buy them online yeah. yeah okay so moving on to the next topic which is the same topic we what we're gonna do is um 
Why don't you explain what you want to do? Yeah. So what I want want to do you take is yeah, no, this is okay. okay. So what I want to do is for the uh, uh, is is, is for, are we shifting in my part now or this is all your part? This is all my part. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, I I I don't know how you guys feel about that, but what what I do with people is mainly let them experience the higher energies. And uh, it doesn't matter where, whether you are visiting my space and I were physically together. Uh, the way I work with uh, sessions on Skype is we create our own sacred space. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, within that sacred space, we, uh, we make a Stargate session work uh, create uh, getting the stargate activated and uh, heighten the energies and within that uh, the Arcturians that are my guidance uh, I, I channel uh, an Arcturian collective of 63 with Daldai as my main uh, Arcturian guide okay, yeah okay. Um, in, the, in the meantime um, well, Lilipad we'll get you just to one second Let, let's let Diana do she has uh, two main guides she works with and you all are probably familiar with Vashta Narada, or Narada uh, who does a lot of the drawings of different people's guides, and, and Yana had uh, both of her guides. Uh, both drawn. of my guidance, guidance, yeah. yeah. So this is Deldai, and he is of the Arcturian uh, collective of, of 63. That's a group uh, of five different... Uh, um, Arcturian species within within the same collective, and uh, Deldai is my main entry point uh, as he uh, as he uh, introduced himself to me, um, and he is the one that I'm channeling. And when I when we do the Stargate session, uh, a lot of uh, when the Arcturians come in, where they work with what their strength is to work with light technology and um, so they agreed to bring in a chamber of light of transformation today and um, but we will do that in a short meditation uh, not as short as Karen would like because <laughs> people are coming in and out but, no, but for I, me I it's, think we should just go with it if yeah it's physical to it's, it, it's to impossible it. to do a bit of Stargate uh, activation then entering into the portal because the work will be that much stronger when we do so so if you bear with me and if you just follow my lead and uh, and uh, just relax into it uh, you can give your opinions after that what you felt most people like it and uh, it's it'll give you um, a sense of what these energies feel like but also whether uh, it's uh, is felt or noticed or not it'll once you and once you um, with intention connect yourself through that energy it'll give you a DNA activation as well that's perfect so so, so lily pad uh, Don what is lily pad's question okay she says um, I was inside a similar portal in my uh, friend's backyard uh, for a short meditation when I got a headache for three days. Okay. I am not sure why. Does anyone experience uh, e effect? That's what she, she, she says. Okay. Can I answer that? Yeah, that's yeah. just for you. So, <laughs> um, with this work, it's always very important to uh, ground and to uh, to uh, have Mother Earth on your side to, uh, to um, help you uh, ground the energies that are too much for you and we always the, the one the people the the, the stargate uh, i'm gonna say the, the the galactics i work with are very sensitive to what uh, amount of energy they bring in what they want is to serve and uh, help help us and uh, they wouldn't help us with uh, overloading us with energy. So they they always tune in very much, and this is the the this is where the Stargate also is helping because it's a conscious field, um, and it's uh, interactive, and it serves us by bringing exactly what the group that is within the sacred space is yeah. needing. So um, the energy can be intense. 
but it's always of the highest light and a gentle and it will always bring uh, perhaps it needs some time to integrate but uh, it's not will not give you a, a terrible uh, physical trouble so too but afterwards like people should make sure they drink their water and exactly that's because it's if you want to even if you uh, want to do the meditation with us within the meditation i ask always ask on a personal level you can ask the energies to come closer within your energies so you always have free will to say this is enough for me i'm just observing or i'm just uh i'm just a witness for now that's okay mm -hmm. so you you'll be, have the benefit of the the higher field but uh the 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 the, the grid system won't uh, really do much with you if you don't want to and it's like i told you last night we did a in the practice channeling group a one mm. particular woman deb uh, who she's not here today but she had such an experience you were there paula where she just started sweating and she had so much energy and mm. and uh, what what i instructed her was that you know when you start to first you become activated by the energy but also too it's 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 part of your learning to also say, okay, I, I need to take a little step back. The energy is too much. And then you sort of negotiate how much you're really able to, to incorporate. And it's also a progression. So probably at another time, you would be able to even hold even that much more energy as your body becomes used to it and you become even more activated. Exactly. And yeah. it's also it's uh, when it's an interactive conscious field, it'll serve everybody on its level so the ones uh among you who are more energy trained and are welcoming the the the, the light light emissions coming in yeah. and and you know you can you can carry higher light uh, a bit more they will be served on their level the other ones who just want to have a taste and want to have uh, an experience of it they will be served as well so it's interactive so yeah. everything is okay and then you yeah you don't in, have to and in any and in any moment when you think oh it's too much energy you could just say what she said you know i'm just gonna take a little step back yeah. and observe but you will definitely benefit from it so whenever you want to uh to to ground yourself more within the meditation it's always good to focus on your feet Focus on your feet and really focus on your connection with Mother Earth. But that's where we will start with. So it's uh, that connection will be safe as well. Okay. We're at the top of the hour. Do you want to take a quick break? No, it's good. No, you're yeah. good? Okay. Everybody good? Does anybody if, need a break? If anyone needs to take a quick break, because this, this will go for about 30 minutes. So if you need, we'll give, we'll, we've, we're three minutes to the top of the hour. We'll give you three minutes to... Uh, grab some water, if you need to go to the bathroom or do whatever, then that's probably, uh, yeah, it's probably a good moment to do it. I am think I'm going to take some water because I, I don't have any. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's any, is there any other questions from anyone? Don, will you do me a favor? Will you type into the chat that, uh, what did you want that for the next 30 minutes we'll be doing? But just when people come in, it's just observe the process and don't. Uh, 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 they can step in, but it's better. It's better to. Uh, uh, we will. We will form the sacred space with the ones that are uh, within this circle right now. And when you when you uh, enter in uh, halfway, it is. Uh, it's better to be to be informed before. Oh my, who is that? <laughs> Hi. Hi, we're going to mute you, new person. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. She's really nice. Okay. Okay, she's a lovely person. I'm going to move out of the, the, the thing so you yeah. have, um, if you want the, you want me to move the Stargate so people can see it? or um, it's Yeah, you could move to the side a bit if you want to. So... I'm going to tell you what, what a bit about what's going to happen. I'm going to lead you through this step by step. Uh, be sure that you are sitting comfortably so that you can meditate for about a half an hour and um, about 30 minutes. 
perhaps shorter, uh, but we'll see what happens. And um, what's also important that, um, I, yeah, just to relax in it. Just give me the benefit of the doubt. And the, what, what I work with are, um, uh, the Arcturians I work with that come in today are uh, eighth dimensional, seventh density. So they're very old and wise, even they look young, even though they look young that I uh, envy very much. <laughs> so, but they are very, ex very experienced and they can see our, uh, as, I, as I ask them, as they see us in geometries, they see our light fields, they know exactly where we are. So uh, they, um, you don't have to uh, worry about anything. So the, the only thing that you have to do is to just, uh, relax into the moment and just let everything let my voice guide you through it and uh, I will exactly tell you what to do and uh, there's not another uh, thing you need to know in front just to participate it's about experience it's not about knowing it's about experiencing but because once it's uh, um, I can tell you a lot about energy but um, it's like a blind person uh, wanting to tell what, what pink looks like. Uh, it's always going to be uh, another, another people's words. And it be, it's only beginning to uh, be your own incorporated, or incorporated experience once you enter it. And uh, once you experience the energies uh, very uh, stronger or very lightly yourself then it becomes yours. So that's mainly what my work is about, is bringing people into contact with their own guidance, but also to bring them into contact with their own higher self energies and everybody sitting in uh, our biological forms as we sit here, our light, our light beings. This is not new, this is what you actually are you are a light being and you live a human life. So it's just about awakening something that you already are or already know. Not scary at all. Okay, let's start. So when uh, within the session, I'll just give you uh, sort of a preview. Uh, when we have time, I uh, it can be that uh, I ask the a half horse in the half horse is on are also uh, a group i work with uh, uh that are extra dimensionals and are eighth dimensional um uh very benevolent uh group of uh, uh, uh group, group collective uh consciousness um the half horse are very skilled in working with sound they were the ones that were living in uh, in the old part of Egypt, and uh, with uh, with the um, here on Earth embodied, and uh, they like the Arcturians work a lot with light technology. Light technology, the Hathors work a lot with sound uh, in manifestation, creation, healing, transformation. Uh, when the time, uh, when there's time enough, I will ask them to come in and they will probably co-create with Arcturians to do sound channeling through me and perhaps some light language uh, can enter the, so um, that I'll be talking gibberish. If, uh, if you're not familiar to that, you can just see. Harder, yeah, do, do I, uh, am I, uh, do I, do I, uh, am I clear for you? Do you hear me? Can somebody answer? Yes, <clears throat> yes. Yes. I hear you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's great. So when when I do the sound channeling, I probably move back a little bit. It's uh, preferable that when we do the meditation, that you keep your eyes shut because then you move your, in, your attention inside. When you move, when you open your eyes, you you immediately get drawn out of your. Uh, 
attention into uh, into your space and in the with all the information around so that's what we're doing okay we'll see what, that everything is in order okay dear ones just um take a deep breath and settle yourself into your chair i will close my eyes as well close your eyes and with every breath softly in and out you move your attention more into your body more into your inner world all the worlds all the words we said before are not important anymore all the visuals you had on your eye are not important anymore just listen to your gentle breath going in and out and while doing that you can focus on your heart space When you're focusing on your heart space, you can feel your inner light, feel your gratitude for being here, gratitude for joining this with your light family. Feeling and gently moving from that space through your light channel a vertical channel of prana that is entering your crown from above and going down below to your basic chakra base chakra out of your base chakra all the way down and on the on the side of your aura, there is your earth portal chakra, which by its intention, just intending it to open, will open for you and let more light through. So you can follow that lower, lower into the body of Mother Earth until you reach her heart, the central crystal of Mother Earth itself and in the true sense of the word as we as electrical magnetical beings are fully bound to her energies the the moment we make contact she as our earth mother will answer by giving us energy back that will stream up the same way through your earth portal chakra up your base chakra and make it way its way to your heart and when we make it into a heart again we follow the road up through your throat chakra through your third eye chakra through your crown chakra up and on the top of your aura there is your cosmic portal chakra which by your intention intending it to open will open beautifully and let in more of the cosmic light while following that light beam up into the galactic center just by intending it to be there you don't know you don't have to know where it is just intention will guide you there and make the contact with those cosmic energies bringing that back to you entering again through your cosmic portal chakra your crown chakra beautiful clear golden light entering your third eye 
throat chakra back into your heart. And this is where it'll merge with the earth energies. The sacred three, the father, the mother, and you as a child. And these energies are glowing within you. And you can extend your field now, because when your field is somewhat extended, it's easier to feel these finer energies, experience them. So extend your field a bit to the front, to the back, to the left and to the right, above you and below you. A nice extended field, bigger than your aura, as big as you want. So now we have a nice vertical channel within ourselves, rounding us within the mother and father energies. We first of all ask Mother Earth to bring into our sacred space together within the quantum field that we are creating in this second her beautiful energies of grounding. Into our sacred space and through our physical bodies, so that all the energies that we may encounter in this little adventure meditation we're having are grounded. And that which no longer serves us may be ad adapted by her energies and transformed into neutral energy again. When we are grounded, we will now activate the Stargate. And this is what we'll do together because that will make it much stronger as there is a central focal point and with our mutual attention just by asking for this yourself inside you don't have to do that aloud you will draw these energies in and this field of heightened energy will be created I ask for the activation of the Stargate now. I ask for the activation of the consciousness grid field, the portal field to come into our sacred space. And you may say the words inside, I ask for the activation of the Stargate. When you do that, you connect yourself to these energies. I ask for the activation of the Stargate. And we give this field a little moment to really set into the space anchored by the Stargate, the physical form, and permeate our own energies so they may be activated and heightened. And as this is taking place already, we ask for the quickening of the field to the seventh dimensional frequencies. And you can ask this insight as well. I ask for a strong seventh dimensional field into our sacred space. And when we ask this, the vortex that is quickening is also providing the energies of the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension, and the seventh dimensional frequencies. We don't have to do this dimension at a time. It's a frequency shift to the seventh and our own 
energy and bodies, light bodies will by resonance, by harmonizing. And this is a universal law that lower energies will always adapt to the higher energies present by resonance. Like we do in nature. When we walk in nature, our energies will harmonize with the more harmonic fields of nature. We ask for a strong seventh dimensional field into this space, this beautiful sacred space within the quantum field we share. And as our body are slowly adapting to these higher frequencies and perhaps if you tune into that you can sense that for yourself that your own energies already are feeling lighter within we ask for the frequencies of the 12th dimension the quickening of the energies to the 12th dimensional energy. And when we ask that inside, I ask for the energies, the frequencies of the 12th dimension. You connect to those energies within your personal field and draw them in. We draw them in as a group. And so we also get acquainted with the eighth dimension, the ninth dimension, the tenth and the eleventh dimensional frequencies. And we just established the portal of the Stargate that will connect us to the other energies that will come into this space with us and share their beautiful higher light energies with us. So now together, we will ask for the angelic realm to come in, as they will assist us when we work in quantum space to hold space for us. We ask for the angels to come in the only thing you have to do is just relax into this energy. And while the angels bring in their energy into a sacred space, within your extended field, try to notice this very soft change of energy, how they bring in a slightly different energetic signature how this central space is changing a bit becoming more their signature and we thank them for bringing their energy in and ask them now because this is a short meditation to help us hold space in a high, high frequency of the 12th dimension. They guard space for us within this higher frequency. So we may benefit from that by bathing within these higher frequencies. So our higher potential, our DNA, is opening beautifully to these higher vibrations. Whether we notice that or not, our DNA encodings opening and blossoming into this higher light by resonance. Now we created this space and it is held by the angels for us. We now invite the Arcturians in. I ask for Daldai, my personal guidance, and the Arcturian Collective of 63 to bring in their energy into this space.
And as they pre-agreed upon this, they will bring in their energies and I will let Deldai talk through me somewhat. I need a little bit of time to tune into him. And so, beloved ones, we are here. We are joyful and we are happy to be with you, sharing our energies. As this one already told you, we will bring a chamber of light today to let you experience this as there is a lot of light technology available for you who are awakening right now. A lot of the galactics are around Earth assisting humanity in their awakening within the higher potential, their natural evolution to a more light being status illuminated your veiling broken soul the memories of your soul existence of your higher light existence is easier to feel and incorporate into your physical body and as well within your memories you are already a multi-dimensional being and by birth was necessary for you to have a veiling of these higher dimensional aspects of yourself to be able to have the full three dimension third dimensional experience to have the experience of the senses that go with it the hearing and the smelling and the feeling on a very physical form way but now dear ones the time is ready for you to grow into your true beingness as a multi-dimensional being The group today will come in as nine. I will be part of that, but always we are connected to the consciousness of the whole. As we are in service to you, we would like to bring in a light grid of transformation. This is a grid system that will permeate not only the sacred space you're sharing but also your light bodies and your physical body to awaken within you your higher density material for evolution we will also bring in light encoded codex with your permission that will help you to integrate that which come in comes into your energy right now over the coming few weeks or months when you are ready for this integration this is like we like to compare like a time released a vitamin that will enter your system over time and assists you in awakening specific encodings within your DNA. When you want this, you can give us permission to work with you within this grid system. If you don't want this, this will just be a more general experience for you, but as pleasant as well we will bring in this grid system now and it will last for about four minutes 
we don't need enough, enough, a lot of time to bring in these energies, as within quantum space, time is not an issue anymore. We would like to ask you for the duration of this transmission and this grid system with, or within you and around you to sit still, place your hands like open cups receiving on your knees and just relax into this energies. There's nothing you need to do but to just be open to receive. And if you are ready now, settle into your chair as easily as possible so you are comfortable. We will bring in this light grid now. This will be silent time. Perhaps for those of you who have their third eye open, you can experience this, see this specific light grid. For those of you who have more of a sensing feeling kind of experience, you can experience this within your light field as well. The light grid is centered now within the space, it permeates all within this space and within your bodies. We give this one the chance to experience this with you. So we will update her on the passing of time. Three and a half minutes left. This is a gentle kiss of light transmissions. This is gentle energy. Just take it in. Just witness. Nothing to do. Beautifully. Three minutes left. Breathe in this light. Just experience two minutes to go. By giving you full permission. Opening up to these light transmissions some more. 
really taking in these energies. Doing beautifully. Just experiencing the light within, the light around you. This great system of transformation, assistance. One minute remaining. Just being within the moment, experiencing nothingness, Just the last bit. By resonance, absorb as much of this light as mission as possible. It is a co-creation. By giving us permission, we can bring in more light. And so we thank you for the given thrust in us while we pull back the light grid out of your sacred space. We will ask the Hathors to join us now for a little bit because after time we don't have much time left. We ask the Hathors to join in. <clears throat>
So now, dear ones, we like to thank all that took part in this co-creation, the Hathors, the Octorians, Mother Earth, your beautiful selves as the light beings that you are already. We thank the Stargate Consciousness for providing the portal and the angels for holding space for us. And so very, very gently, you can stretch, you can feel your bottom on the chair, feel your feet on the ground. And when you're ready, you bring your full consciousness back into this space with us and open your eyes. This one closed down. Oh, and it probably, oh, did it close down? Mm -hmm. oh, then we lost the whole transmission. No, you don't. Oh, perfect, okay. The, can you it's still just, see us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect. The, the screen went dark, so it, it looked like it stopped. So you look like. No, it, it was all there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to. Is she very loud now or not? No, it's no. okay. Okay, good. And so did I kill everybody with my sound? <laughs> no, the cat even liked it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, the animals like it, I know. <laughs> Yeah. So I see I see you guys there as a nice oh, okay now I see you again I see you guys saw you guys I like a nice green feel but uh, <laughs> so I see new faces welcome yeah so so I would like I would love to hear what your experience is well can I share mine yeah because when we when we first got into the meditation I really had the vortex. The vortex building and I did see the sort of sacred geometry forming mm -hmm. and it became very uh, multi-dimensional and it started to really shift you know to stretch mm -hmm. and to then it was turning and so I really had that sort of in the center of my meditational field mm -hmm. and it did spread out beautiful uh, during that so that was beautiful my, thank you yeah, for sharing that was my uh, experience but I don't have my glasses now. I've lost them again. So okay. I can't see uh, an olive. Perhaps mine? Here. Thank you. But somehow here. Oh. So if you do have a question, um, you can just put your cue in the, or if you want to make a comment, you can just put your cue, uh, how do you say it, in the chat thing. I'm a little out of it. <laughs> I'm like, ooh. But if anyone wants to make a comment, does anyone want to comment or? I will. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, I experience the energies are not from unfamiliar to me because I work with the Hathors and Arcturians, etc. Yeah. I also do toning and sound healing. But I had this really neat experience where I experienced kind of a scaffolding, like rising 
I don't know, hundreds of feet <laughs> kind of from my crown, kind of anchored in the body. But I mean, it was like a geometric pattern rising up, rising, rising up. It was very interesting. I don't recall having that experience before. Yeah, it's um, nice. Yeah, thank you, for very, thank you so much. Um, if, if I can say something, it's fine. Sure. Um, for me, uh, it is not like you explained. I'm just feeling. I just feel. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, my my visualization with my third eye is just in the beginning. You know, it's okay. not that clear. But I can. I thought I I saw the grid, but you know. If you're not that developed, um, you you think you see, and then, but the feeling was all good. Okay, thank okay. you. So, uh, so if you if I ask you now, if you would be able to see it, what is your first uh, thought that comes to mind? Is what you saw? Um, it it was not if if I understand a grid, then it's 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 lines like. A vertical and and uh, horizontal, mm -hmm. but um, I saw more um, um, sprinkled stuff, you know, and they 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 looked like a line, but um, it must be the, the thing which is coming, and I I am able to see what I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's Great. what I wanted to say. Well, everybody is opening up uh, uh, into their own representation system. When mm -hmm. you're more visual, like I'm an artist, it's more easy for me to open up visually. When you're a musician, you probably will have your ears open first. Or when you're more uh, uh, intuitive, you will have the feeling part, uh, more of knowing, no of feeling. Yeah. So you're opening up beautifully, like the perfect being that you are. Yeah, OK, thank you. Everyone experiences differently and mm. there's no right way. No. And, and so if you see it, you feel it, you hear it, you know it, that is your individual experience. And like John Viana was saying earlier, no one can really tell you what the experience should or will feel like, but it is an experience that only you can have yes. in your own personal way. And that's why, you know, and we were talking about this earlier and then I've been talking about it a lot, that the, the work that we are trying to do is an experiential thing. And to only have the knowledge of something or to know that it's there is much different than having it truly be part of you yeah, because be you've you. experienced it yourself. Mm. You know, you can only, you can talk about something, but until you really experience it and how you experience it very individually is 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 exactly the right way for you okay what i want to say uh, from the understanding <laughs> and from from what i read like you you said you read a lot of books i read also a lot of books so i have a pretty good understanding what it's like mm. but uh, the body is not <coughs> uh, coming with the, with the mind you know it's not one it one can't... level yeah, the, the body is coming with the mind. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just a Not process the other way around. of opening up, and uh, this oh. this is this uh, takes uh, takes years. <laughs> it has a, a nice, gentle, gentle like a flower opening, and it's, and it's just be be grateful for every moment within the now that that it's. And it's, as I want to say, my flower is one year old. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Last year, summer, it started. Okay, so I can't ha have more than that. Mm. I'm in, on a good way, I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you for okay. sharing. Well, yeah. what, what you experience now yes. and in your, in your ability to perceive what you're experiencing is exactly what it needs to be as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Okay. And, and the thing is, is if I understand correctly, this isn't in what the Arcturian said, I believe, because I was sort of gone, but I believe what they said was that it will continue mm -hmm. to work and activate mm -hmm. you even after this yeah. is over. So in a few days from now, you you probably even have even more understanding and perception. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see what the others say. Yes. Okay.
Yeah. I'm curious. Um, Michelle says, uh, I wonder I wonder what my shape of geometry is. Neon? Did what? He knows there's does anyone do anyone know? I think anyone what your your personal individual geometry? Well what she was talking talking about everybody how arcturians see us and that mm -hmm. each of us have a shape of they see us as geometry which i've experienced like with other people when i'm working on them i will see like flashes of like yellow triangles or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway so so i was wondering if each of us like a snowflake have our own kind of geometrical or ge a geometry pattern that is okay. specific to our own selves, much like you've created a Stargate and that one does has a specific resonance. And mm -hmm. if you added or subtracted certain geometries from it, it would have a different frequency. Yes, but and, I, think, I think there are basic geometries that are more to uh, sort of the, the basic pattern of humanity, like we are created as a human being. And above that, you bring in the signature of your soul experience of many lives. So everybody is completely unique like that. And also in within your geometries, uh, there are it's not a geometry like a snowflake it's a constant moving and shifting uh, uh whirling uh kind of uh it's i don't see it but um uh this is what i can this is what i can understand of it is that uh, every part of us is a geometry on itself our organs are geometries yeah, yeah. and so our eyes are geometries and they, they are uh like a single instrument but in totality they are uh, an orchestra so it's not one shape it's just a moving and there's colors as well and there's a lot of when one of the one of i mean one of the best descriptions of what we really are is the basic description of sacred geometry of that that single point in, in the expansion of it mm -hmm. moving into the first shapes and then it's just multiplying and multiplying and reforming mm -hmm. and we are that everything is in fact that and that what the the actual shape of what it is is actually then it's vibration yes you know it's it's truly vibration and that is why sound and the 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 sacred geometry they are one in the same mm -hmm. right they are one in the same and so we so are we all kind of are always in flux we're shifting we're geometries in yes okay. what we perceive as the what we perceive as a physical form is actually non-existent we are right. all a constant moving energy that's what we are mm -hmm. we only perceive it as a form right yeah, it's all great, great gradations. Can you Radiation, say gradations, gradations of a frequency, uh, a frequency, and there's our light bodies as well. So they 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 have, uh, have a totally different frequency, frequency and uh, different shapes. Uh, again, necessary for holding that space. Okay. That form. Yeah. When the Hathors come in, the, the sound they bring in and also what, what they experience, explain mm -hmm. to me, also the light language is uh, energy encoded. So it's not just a nice singing, but it's actually the vo using the voice as a, as a, as a medium to uh, bring in the light, the light encodings. That's another way, like I said, in the Arcturians work more with grid systems and with light with light downloads as well a lot of a lot of us get light downloads uh, in the night from our own guidance that we perhaps not yet contacted with but they help us ascend in that way and this is not that something they um they they do by their own uh, account but this these are Pre agreed upon contracts that they help us awaken. And this is what you pre birth agreed upon to do that, that they will do that for you at a certain time within your timeline now. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry yes. Do you personally see um, the geometry when you work? When I, when I, yeah, so uh, sometimes 
I it, it's it's uh, it's in and out. Sometimes I see things. Sometimes I um, I know know what the energy is like or know what the color is. But um, the sometimes I see the light grid as uh, uh, a grid system like uh, squares, but then very small, and then it's a whole field of that. Sometimes they have more, and I don't. The, what what's the what's the the shape that the bees the beehives make? Yeah, that's what I saw. Uh, yeah, I exactly. And that's I saw what that. Yeah. yeah, that's that's actually what I saw today yeah. was the beehive. I, shape. Saw the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw well, it. I did a healing session this week, so, and I saw a hexagon. A hexagon, a yes, exactly. So that's that's uh, really and it sometimes changes uh, from the field because they have more like today. That was a transformational field, so they worked with our DNA activation, our next step uh, of evolution as a as a human. And um, but did they have more healing fields, or they have more uh, really um, activating fields on a specific specific thing? So uh, what they bring in, for example, when I do a, a, a third eye opening, uh, 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 especially when I do the the, the um, open to channel workshop, I help you to open your telepathic channel uh, equipment. <laughs> yeah. You know, in, in one moment, in about two minutes, I had a really strong pain right here. Okay. Like, like, like either the feeling was either something was being deeply inserted or something was being pulled out. And I don't know wh which one it is. And then the pain was here. Okay. So it was, and it was significant pain mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, this is really, really. Really, and it's not a pain I've ever had before, but it was a very strong pain. Yeah. And then here I felt here's something being really removed. And I said, what is being removed? And they said blinders. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. So when but, we, but I don't know what this one was, but this when, one I heard blinders. When there is a transformational field, mm -hmm. they, when you give permission, that's why I mentioned that within the, the meditation is that they work on, in, uh, on your in your energy and they see what when there are blockages they see when there is um, a certain emotional blockages that are no uh, what have what have to do with all programming that is no longer serving you and can be removed very easily sometimes you have to see it but in these times it's more easily to remove it energetically so they help you mm -hmm. because you gave permission to to rid, rid yourself of that. Yep. So you, your energy flow is, uh, your light body is cleansed. Oh, cool. I'm cleansed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did anyone else have any comments? Don, I can't see the YouTube. Is there anyone in YouTube saying anything or asking anything? Uh, no, they're just very positive. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. well, Hi, no. I have a comment. Okay, Micheline, go ahead. Yes, hello. Um, during the meditation, I because I've got some galactic Reiki training, I used all my symbols okay. for the grounding and uh, the rainbow pyramid and the Vajan wow. and all that. I did feel pain, just like Karen. So that I thought that was interesting on my that? right side. It was the yeah. spot. It was the same. Uh, mine is on the right side. Okay, mine's on the left side, but it left. was in the same spot here? On the yes, but a, a little bit more in the back. Okay. Just a little bit more in the back. Okay. But the same, more or less the same area. I found that was interesting. Okay. Um, I also saw the shape. It was during the meditation, you bring up the light from above meeting the earth energies, right? Mm -hmm. And during that time, I saw liquid golden light coming in from both ends. Mm -hmm. And at the meeting was the yin yang. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. That's symbol. Definitely. That's really cool. So we that make, I thought. Make, uh, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I, it's just that, that I thought that was interesting, and it was golden liquid light mm. merging together. And as it was going up the chakras, so from the the earth, the the red chakra, going up lightly, is it was very gentle, but there was heat, so I could feel the heat going up, and so I knew where it was at. Good. I'd like to make a comment. You're talking about portals. I 
last Sunday was the um, on July 15th with the International Sacred Dance Day. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine held a sacred dance with a group of women I, I attended. And we were nine women. And one of the women brought a miniature type of handcrafted portal. Okay. It, had, it was made out of natural materials such as wood and stones and wool. And there were two figurines, one, and, and they were little musicians. It was, it was made handcrafted with intent. And she brought it so that we could dance around it. Oh. Mm. And uh, we danced a couple of hours. And all of us at the end felt so empowered. And our heart chakras were so very activated. Mm. It, it was incredible. Mm. Um, later on, the next morning, I, I spent the night at the farm. And the next morning, I took a picture of the sun. It was just such a beautiful morning. And later, looking at the picture... There were orbs. I found two orbs in the pictures. Oh, and there are two pictures that are alike, but the orb is not at the same spot. Because at the beginning, you start doubting. You say, oh, it's just the camera, mm-hmm. something, you know. But no, so I just thought I'd share this. I, it's nice. And, I, I, and what do you think of this miniature portal that we, because I felt, ah, oh, we are opening a portal at the farm. Mm-hmm. It, it, what would, how would you interpret this? Well, I think that that um, I can show you actually can show you that there are a lot of spontaneous portals as well. Uh, when you are coming together in circle, that is what uh, what all the star beings are saying is very important, especially around the equinoxes and solstices. Sharing, uh, doing the communal thing is a very important thing. The time, of, the time of lone wolf, as they say, is over. And whenever we come uh, into a gathering together with intention, intention is becoming the one thing. It's really important to focus your energy, to manifest, uh, to bring into creation for yourself. Um, the, yeah, it's okay. The, <laughs> The, of course, when you intend, and uh, I don't ex- specifically know the portal she was bringing. Mm-hmm. I, I know there are uh, portals opening up when you intend to. You don't need a device for that always. This is a very strong device to open up. But uh, there are uh, a, a myriad of ways to do that, I think. I would like to, to show you uh, some photographs I got from the the last... Um, from the last time they they went to uh, they went to Egypt. They, they can see that. You have to make. No, I'll make i make a I'll make them bigger. <laughs> I'll make them bigger for you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Really close to your screen. <laughs> you can. I'm going to. Oh. oh. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, this is the photograph you see. Yeah. And then yes. I'll, I'll, I'll shift it. Then you see a spontaneous. Oh yes. And you you, you can you saw the photograph of that. I'll show you another one. It kind of has the same signature yeah. as your. So this your... is the photograph, and at the same the next photograph, you see the portal opening, spontaneously. Oh. You see that? So portals can open up within the energy, uh, as we are uh, growing within our co-creation co-creatorship ourselves, becoming higher frequency, our, uh, our connection and resonance within certain power places or within certain energies, they can easily open up because they connect. Yeah, this is what I saw. I yeah. saw, oftentimes I saw this. Yeah. Other times, not, did I, not only did I see this, but I felt myself yeah. turning. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I also saw the, the hexagonal yeah, you're becoming yeah. you're becoming one with the field, and yes. we are becoming. Uh, I have these ascension groups in Leiden in my in my space, and I'm working with them to two two different groups for a year and a half now, and I the 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 co-creatorship and them connecting to that guidance and the energy shift that they made make us all so much more stronger within the groups and within the creations we bring in. It's uh, 
it really amplifies. So if you have, you, if you feel um, uh, curious, I always tell people if you're curious about something, that is a tell uh, whether this is something you could work with or right. whether this is special. Because we b all bring in our gifts th at this time for this this transformation. So perhaps this this is something that you uh, could work in could work with yourself. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, you. You know, one of the other things I just want to tell you, when you were, when we were sh uh, sending dimensions, mm -hmm. there was one moment where, because Theos is in the dimension of, they, they shift between, say, the 12th dimension and the 18th mm -hmm. dimension. There was one moment where we sort of got to their dimension and the dove that I see with them. And <laughs> when I see them in my mind's eye, I see three specific doves mm -hmm. when i see them with just my physical i only see one but it really lit up it was like we shifted right into their mm -hmm. their dimension and, and there was also times where we as we were going through the dimensions the beings that were in those dimensions sort of came forward yes really. every dimensional yeah. shift has their guidance and yeah. a lot of us have have their guidance on these higher dimensions and the reason why we just do the bandwidth to the 12th dimension is that we are opening our 12 strands of dna mm -hmm. which is the new human that uh, the evolved human that we're going into yeah so you guys we're right at the top of the hour so it went really fast um i would love to invite you to come back yeah, it would be wonderful Happy to, to come back. If if there is any, just one more question, we can do one more question. If there's anything from the chat or anyone, so but if not, nothing just, in the chat. Nothing in the chat. Thank Good. you, John. Thanks for uh, monitoring. So everyone, thank you so very much for coming. Thank you. Much love to Yana. Yeah. And um, thank you for joining my crazy adventure here. <laughs> and for sharing your, because we, I will say that we have, we've experienced a lot of channelers, but this is sort of channeling in a, in a healing uh, manifestation in action. And this is not something we get to experience that much on the Saturday webinar. So this is a wonderful way to also mm -hmm. understand how you can work with your own channeled of knowledge. Um, uh, you know, the, the information you're bringing through in a way that can directly help humanity that is maybe not just sitting and answering questions, that they're, you know, channeling can be very much more. It can be a very activating, uh, forward-moving thing for for the people that you're working with and, uh, and also for yourself. So, you know, I hope that this gives you another perspective on how how people are using their their connections to their their beings and to their their guidance and their knowledge so thank you once again for yeah that. and yeah. thank you for sharing your community yeah. with me oh thank you well you're welcome now you're part of us <laughs> <laughs> yay uh, so just to remind you this has been the saturday human colony hukolo webinar you can find us on hukolo.org if you want to become part of human colony you can join for ten dollars a month that supports us in our our you know, our costs, our little costs that we have, but we do do have some costs. And it also gives you a guaranteed seat in our paid webinars um, that you can be in the in the room, the Google room and, and ask questions. So for $10 a month, please, if you feel if you feel guided, uh, we every little bit helps um, below. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscriber button. This this channel is the Hukolo 2 channel. Everything is always uploaded onto Hukolo TV, but we're growing this channel because this channel is becoming more broad and, it, and is including many, many different people like Yana and myself and, and all the other wonderful guests we've had. So please hit subscribe down below. Also, just as a reminder, the uh, Hukolo Ascension Workshop, third workshop in Dansville, New York, August 16th through the 21st. They will be doing a live broadcast from there. If you would like to attend in person, it's $400 for five nights. You will learn galactic Reiki, you will learn channeling, you will learn telepathy. There will be nature walks and meditation and fun times. It's always supposed to be a wonderful uh, experience for everyone. So if you get a chance, please go there. Again, hukolo.org, you can find all the information. So. Much love to everyone. Next week, we have Jim Charles. He'll be back. So uh, that is a paid webinar. And if you want to be in that one, you definitely have to be a member of uh, Hukolo. So 
Much love to everyone, and we'll see you. Much love. We'll bye bye. See you uh, very soon, and I'm going to turn this off. Much love. We're going to go Much eat love. something. Bye. I'm going to eat some food. I'm a little hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>